Jeffers, how are you guys looking? Solid. There. Good. Uh, I'll Jackson. try and stay in the shade. Want to lead us off? Craig, let's just start with the news of the day. Uh, signing Cody Baker to the homegrown contract. Uh, thoughts behind uh, that deal? Yeah, look, Cody's Cody's a great story. Um, not only like his individual work ethic and, and what he's done, but it's a reward for him. It's a reward for the club because we have so many people involved in each player's development that you know, I can't tell you like how many people are smiling around the club right now having played a part of his development and getting him to this point. And um, what's key is for Cody is our first team staff came to me. And that's, that's the relationship that we want to have in this club is our development staff gets players to a point where the first team staff is asking for them to be a part of this every day. So it's, uh, it's obviously an individual reward to Cody, but from a club perspective, this is an awesome day. We've seen a lot of him in the last few weeks, specifically yeah. in these performances. What, what have you liked out of his game? <laughs> well, you've seen a lot of him in a position that most normal clubs wouldn't ask him to play because he's, he's a, primarily a right-sided player for anyone that's followed him for years with the Defiance and, and with our youth. But um, he's done a great job on the left filling in, and he's, din, he's been um, consistent. You know, and that's kind of what we've seen from Cody for years is just consistency and consistent improvement as well. So we think he's got a long ways, lot, not a long ways to go, but we actually think he's got a lot more to, to build upon. And he's got a lot more potential. So I think the, the really neat thing is everyone's seen him play a position that he is unfamiliar with, and he's played it really well. It's not easy to go against Javier Hernandez and then Ache Ache and all these big names for a kid his age. What is it about him that gives him that ability to be stay composed in those moments? Well, I, I'll tell you, I, I would love for you to play this back for him, and I want to hear his answer to that because I think psychologically every one of these guys is a little bit different. And some guys see that opportunity as, and they see it as, hey, this is my chance to perform and perform well and defend and defend well. And others see it as, you know, just another soccer game. And some people have the, everyone, all these guys are trained psychologically in different ways. And so Cody might not even look at the guy across from him, even though on paper it looks neat. And to us, it's a story. So I, uh, I'll leave that to him to answer, but what I will say is I saw who he played against, and when I see those names against him, I'm really interested in finding out how he performs and uh, the level he's played at over the last year, but specifically the last couple of weeks was what tilted this. Brian couple. said um, that his defending wasn't a surprise, but his passing was, and we saw that there was a couple of passes he had from the left side. Uh-huh. Can you just... Because he looked calm and cool, staying in terms of being in the moment. Did you all see that? Did yeah, of course. I'm the general manager, man. I mean, we see everything. Yeah, right. Uh, no, we, we put a young player on the left when he's a right-sided player. So to pretend that we thought he was going to break lines with his passing on his left foot, you know, we probably speculated that he wouldn't do it as frequently and as smoothly as he did. When he cuts inside to his right foot, that's when we kind of have that higher expectation, but he uh, he surprised us a little bit. But I, I don't want to I don't want to pretend he surprised us a lot. We we knew his defending was going to be solid, and in general, when you're a good one one v one defender like Nuhu is as well, you find yourself winning the ball with a little bit of space in front of you, and that's what Cody did. When he took that space, that next decision was what we were really interested in finding out and he exceeded our expectation in a very short window obviously in a very in a very small time frame and very small amount of games to analyze from a data perspective but he he was fantastic and there's really no other word to describe the last couple of weeks for him as a, a staff, two, how do you balance as a staff how do you balance expectations in terms of what he is looking to do your expectations of you know he's ready yeah. and you know, how do you balance that and talk as a staff well our hope is that every player's expectation is to play every game if we have a player that doesn't expect to play every game and doesn't have that hope, then, then it becomes my job to find them a different home. So I hope his expectation is to perform week in and week out. Our expectation as a club doesn't always align perfectly with each player's and, and shouldn't because we still need some time to develop him. We still need some time to make sure he's ready to play week in and week out. And there's some other guys that played pretty darn well against the Galaxy as well. Reed Baker-Whiting is one that 
was had an absolute phenomenal game. And so Cody's coming in at a good time in terms of the number of really talented young players we have. But in terms of that development and that ladder and, and the depth chart, he's, he's, uh, you know, he's got some work to do, and he knows that. And, and our coaching staff's brutally honest with our young players. Like, when we get healthy again, he's going to have a tough time proving that he deserves to be in that lineup. It's not, out, it's not unattainable, but it's going to be tough. How close to a first-team contract was he at the start of the year, and I guess how did his ability to play on the left side impact your interest in bringing, giving him that contract now? Yep. Uh, I'm not really good at being coy, as you guys have figured out. So he was really close to having a first-team contract at the end of last year. He was really close at the beginning of this year. Um, caught an injury, and I don't know if that set him back or if the performance of other guys made it difficult. You know, we... Our team checked in this year in great physical shape and, and really focused. And so a lot of really high-performing players in the preseason maybe altered our plans with Cody. But then, um, you know, seeing him play and play well, it, it, it wasn't like the conversation hadn't happened prior. It just, it's all about timing. And this was obvious. You know, when a guy steps in and does what he did, you, you're ready. What was that as a, as a left-sided player? Was that something that really sort of like changed the, the conversation? Uh, you could ask that question to about seven different people out here, and you might get seven slightly different answers. What I'd say to that is, from my perspective, uh, I'm not going to mislead our fan base or our coach that Cody is capable of playing on the left. Cody won't be expected to play on the left consistently. Uh, and so those types of players, that type of skill set, that's something Cody's built, and that makes him more valuable than just a single position player. But no, me specifically seeing him play left back wasn't what triggered it. It was the fact that he played well against very high level of competition. And that to me says, you're ready. And especially if we've already visited this once or twice before, we, we got to stop outsmarting ourselves at some point. Got to ask you about uh, Paul Rothrock and three games, three yeah. goals. What have you seen from him? Paul's done well. I mean, this is a player who specifically chose to come back here and play for defiance and i mean i can't i can't really say many critical things the guy's a workhorse he's honest as the day is long he's exactly what you see there's no like paul is a, a way more talented young me as a soccer player like he shows up consistent every day he's going to give you a little more some days but he never dips below his level of performance um, the value in a player like that is immeasurable. And, um, you know, we're hoping Paul stays on the same path and that he continues the way he's going because, again, this is credit to our development staff and, and Corey Sincer for bringing him in to the Defiance because he's a player that right now is challenging the way we structure a roster and he's challenging the way we expect our players to develop and he's – he seems to be doing it pretty quickly. Well, and continuing on that, right, what more do you need to see from him to, for him to earn a contract like Cody just did? Uh, you know, more. Con we just need to see it longer. You know, one of the things with Paul is we, we did watch him when he was at Toronto. We watched him when he was at college. But we, we want to see it in our environment. And Paul's a wonderful guy. He fits in well in the locker room. He's, he's done everything correctly. It's just a matter for us of getting to that point where it's a natural transition, as it's been with Cody and so many guys before Cody, where the familiarity of everyone in the organization is important before we make a transition or a decision like that. So in terms of consistency, uh, you need to see like five, ga five goals in five games? Yeah, like 10. <laughs> Ten's okay. better. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a million ways to look at it. The, when we play against San Diego, that's a team that, you know, a year and a half ago, that's who we played against, right, uh, from a defiant standpoint. So when we get to see him play against first-team competition, that's, that's really where our ability to evaluate him is, is going to be measured. And he had a great game against the Galaxy, not just because of production, but because of the way he went about his work for the whole game. And obviously – you know, this is not rain on anyone's parade because what he did for us in Houston is, is obviously really remarkable. Um, it was a short amount of time, so it's really hard to go back and go, well, it was, a, it was an amazing nine minutes. Not, you know, it's, he, he subbed in and he did his job and he did it well, and, and that's what we want to see more of.
And with, with that in mind, I mean, how crucial is it going to be for you going into the next transfer window with having seen these players, not just you tracking them and what they're doing, but in a high stakes situation like Open Cup yeah. and, and, you know, just against Houston? Well, I would say that, yeah, look, I mean, from a front office perspective, this is a pretty darn good problem to have, to have a lot of developing players and younger players playing at a really high level and a, not, not just technically, but tactically, there was some astute play in that, specifically that Galaxy game. Really tactically, there were moments, there were spells of 8, 10, 15 minutes at a time where I actually thought tactically we were the better team. I thought our, our group understood each other. I thought they understood spaces to, to attack and the, the chances we created in that game were some remarkable chances that we unfortunately didn't finish or we may have come out on a better end. That's something you can't really order off a menu if, if, you're, if you're in my position or Sean's position or Corey or, or Henry. You know, this is a great problem to have and it allows us to be far more selective, far more picky in what we look at doing in the summer window because rewarding people inside of our organization is important to us, as opposed to just going out and hunting the world and, uh, and trying to go somewhere neat or, or sign someone from a cool club. So considering that he's so versatile, Cody Baker, um, is left back still something that you'd be looking for in the transfer window, or do you feel pretty comfortable now? Well, it, you know, a lot, of, a lot of left back depends on new. You know, look, Kellen Rowe has done a phenomenal job the last couple of years. The, the, the several times he's plugged in at left back has hasn't put a foot wrong, to be fair. Um, Cody's done the same thing the last couple games and hopefully continues uh, over the next several weeks. But our left back situation really only pivots on new. And we just re-signed him and we like having him here. And barring a, barring a, a major offer or, or someone making, a, making an offer that we can't responsibly say no to from a financial standpoint, you know, I think we're, we're looking pretty good right now with knew who Kellen and Cody. Culture-wise, how important is healthy competition? Healthy competition is great. Uh, as long as it dips into venomous at times. Um, you know, healthy, friendly competition at practice is wonderful in terms of culture, but it's not always pushing. You know, we, we were healthy and friendly last year, and look where we finished. Right now, we're healthy, friendly, but we also have a little bit of, you know, these guys have high expectations for themselves, going back to the earlier question. Every one of our players right now believes they can contribute. And that's pretty unique on an MLS roster, the way we construct them and the way our, our ability to construct a roster financially, also roster spots. There's a lot of young players right now on our roster, but they are in a mindset right now where they want on the field so they can positively impact. That doesn't happen without just a little bit of venom. And that's what we need. And I think that's where Brian and our coaching staff are ultra skilled at getting that level of competition on a daily basis out of these guys. Is that something that was missing? Uh, uh, or, I, or, or I don't let's say that was put in a little bit more. I think I think obviously last year's absences played a played a big role in, in you know, culture also has to do with the people. Yeah. And if, yeah. if you know, with some of our absences last year I think with maybe drew away from that. But I also think you know, right now it's it's really, and you've seen it throughout this season so far, there's a lot of plug and play. One guy out, one guy in, and that next guy in doesn't go in and play okay. He goes in and performs up to a high level, and I think that has a lot to do with the expectations these guys have reset for themselves. And um, did we slip a little? Yeah, we slipped. We slipped last year, but credit to all these men and, and women that contribute to this because they're the ones that have reset, not me. You, I, you know, I sit up in my office and pretend to know what they're doing on a daily basis. They, these guys are doing the work. Yeah, I'm sorry to run into you. But no, you're fine. I remember I think the coach said, I remember this is he said he also had to reset. I remember at the, the, the press conference. We all did. Said, yeah, I got to take a look at it. I got to <laughs> see what I'm doing. And well, there was natural change, right? Yeah. I mean, with, with my change, um, I asked everyone for input on what they wanted from me, and I asked what they, you know, what they thought I should be helping them with. So um, I thought it was very reflective. A lot of the feedback I got from players and from staff um, was, hey, we're not that far off, but we do need to change. And the changes have clearly worked. And as long as we can maintain those, we're going to be a really competitive team throughout the entire year. Um, Danny Leva seems to be doing well in Colorado. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, what have you thought of his performances? Uh, he, he was phenomenal last week in their Open Cup match. 
uh, you know, we're we're watching every match. You know, it's it it's a lot more fun to watch Colorado play when they've got one of our guys on the field. Um, he's he's done well. He was really good last week. You know, we're in constant communication with them in terms of making sure that he's comfortable and making sure that he's giving what he's supposed to to their club while he's there. And um, Danny's high caliber, high ethical guy. And, you know, right now he's he's wearing their crest and he's playing his heart out for them. But he's done a phenomenal job in the transition from my perspective, from what I can see from the outside. Anything else for Craig? Thanks. All right, thank you. Oh, thanks, guys. <clears throat>